Productive Pastor 99, four meetings I schedule with myself. Welcome back to the show, friends, Productive Pastor, where we talk about healthy ministry through strategic productivity. I'm Chad Brooks, the steward of the Productive Pastor uh, economy. It's because there's so much stuff we have going on. We've got... uh, the Productive Pastor community on Facebook. I've got the email list. We've got the podcast. We've got all the folks that I interact with all across the internet. It's always the handle at Rev Chad Brooks, and I'm stoked to have you on for this episode. Episode 99, y'all, that's a lot of episodes. Uh, I talked about that in a conversation I had uh, just yesterday with Reverend Colin Bagby, um, who pastors uh, in Houston, and I'll talk about you can You can save that to the next episode to hear about that, but just wild, we've been you know hanging out and doing this for almost two years straight in this iteration of the show. And it's always a joy and honor to be here with you in your ears. Uh, day late, but this is the thing, is Holy Week. I was working with a, a friend of mine yesterday, Todd Rossnagel, who's the Director of Communications for the Louisiana Conference down at Methodist this church. Also hosts the fantastic Shoving Wilco podcast. If you're into Wilco, go find Shoving Wilco, listen to it, trust me. It's awesome. But uh, we were kind of talking about some stuff, you know, kind of medium level things. And he said, I'll get back to you next week once we get the big guy out of the tomb. And I laughed really hard. And then as the, as the day went on, I realized I'm not going to make the episode. I've got too much stuff to take care of. But I'm here with you Monday, Thursday. I've got my sermons for Good Friday written. I've got my sermons for Easter Sunday written. I've got one more coaching call this afternoon. But right now my focus is on y'all and to talk about these meetings and what this means to me. So we're just going to go ahead, just go get straight on with the content. You can find the show notes, revchadbrooks.com slash ppp slash 099. Y'all, the zero is about to matter. So let's jump straight into it. So you might say in chat, what are these meetings you schedule with yourself? Let me talk to you first about personal meetings. There's an old adage, and I can't remember where it's from, but it's I think it was a president that said, if I have two hours to chop a tree, I'm going to spend one hour sharpening the axe. You know, if we don't have closed door time, it's a phrase I've been using a lot lately for people who are struggling to find deep work or struggling to find the margin to do the high-level things they know they need to in their ministry career. If we don't have this time to ourselves, we're going to leave things to be wanting. Personal meetings or meetings that you schedule, you, you realize, I'm going in here for a purpose, and that purpose can be many different things. And I've kind of got four ones I'm going to share with you. But, you know, in short, personal meetings are about preparation. They're about thinking. They're about uh, iteration of things. They're about de-stressing. For me, you know, one of the barometer readings I have when I feel like I'm overwhelmed and stressed out is I start asking myself if I had the time to do the high-level work that only I can do and I do it by myself. And so many times what I realize is I've not had the time to do that. And I've not been able to do, to, to spend that uh, focused time. In the 515 course, it's a free email course I have about decluttering your ministry schedule in a week, especially in those times of chaos. One of the first things I tell you to do is to have a personal meeting with yourself on Monday to just brain dump out all the things you're trying to carry in your mind. If you want to get the 515 course, it goes out on email every Friday. I mean, every Monday starts Monday to Friday. You can get that link in the show notes. I'd love to send you that. It's 100% free. As I said, like I said, it gets delivered through email. So the four meetings I schedule with myself. And what I'm also going to do is I'm going to share the Clifton strength that I have that really energizes this. And so that, that, that strength is energizing to that meeting, but that meeting is also energizing to that strength because I realize that so many of these things interlock wonderfully with some of my Clifton strengths, especially those in my top tip. So the first meeting I have with myself is what I call the coffee meeting. This is something I do. I, I like to be able to do this probably once a month, but I save the small ball. I save the things I've been putting off until I have a stack of a bunch of stuff that really and truly is going to take like five minutes a piece to take care of. And so I like to go to a place to where I know I can just hammer through some stuff. I like a coffee shop for this. I like especially certain coffee shops for this. I don't really have one that fits the bill in where I live now. I had a bunch of them up in North Louisiana when I was there. But also, I travel for work a lot now, and I've begun collecting coffee shops that are great for coffee meetings with myself. 
And so when I go into that, I like to have an hour or two, uh, no more than no more than two normally. And I go in there and I just handle a bunch of direct tasks. This is where if I have to do a, a bunch of emailing, a bunch of updating, this is where if I need to go on the back end of something and spend some time managing it, if I need to go into Trello and I want to really kind of clean out my weekly dashboard, uh, arrange things, if I have to build a file structure for something. I also have this project I've been working on for the last few months, and I just need to schedule a coffee meeting and go and get it done and knocked out. But I've got this Notion database I am building right now as it relates to Scripture. You'll probably hear about that in the next few months because I'm really stoked about it. I think it's a great use case for Notion, and I think it solves a lot of great problems that pastors have uh, in their teaching and making their teaching last longer than the moment you're teaching it. But these coffee meetings are just that. I'm going to you know, slam some caffeine, uh, get some energy into me. I'm going to go into this, and I'm going to knock out a big, huge string of a bunch of tasks. Now, sometimes I find myself midweek realizing that I, as I've been taking notes, that taking notes, I'm collecting a massive list of small ball things. And when that happens, sometimes I realize, hey, it's like early afternoon. I don't have anything on my schedule. I'm at like a yellow zone, like as Kerry Newhoff calls it in his book, At Your Best, um, or as I call it, like in the Becoming Productive course, I'm at a dealing level. Like I, I can I can get some stuff done. It can't be that high level, but I can get some stuff done. I'll just bolt off, if especially if, I, if it's like 1 o'clock and I realize this is where I'm at. I got a bunch of these small balls, and I don't have anything scheduled this afternoon. I'm going to go to the coffee shop. I'm going to get a cappuccino. I don't care what time of the day it is, and I'm going to start hammering this stuff off the Clifton strength that this really applies to is called activator. Activator is my number two strength. Activators don't, they want to quit talking about it and they want to start getting it done. I don't have an executing strength until I think number 17 in my 34 strengths. And people are always asking me questions like, Chad, how do you get things done if you have no executing strengths inside of this natural strength domain? And I tell them, it's, it's my activator. It's another strength that's going to come back to another one of these meetings, but it's just, I'm just going to get it done. I'm going to go boom, 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 boom. A lot of times these are the tasks that are so small, there's not a midpoint to accomplishing it. It's as though if the task can be completed in one or two steps, go get it done. Or it's something that has to happen at such a granular level, like file structures or organizing a bunch of stuff and putting it all inside of a file together. That piece, perfect for the coffee meeting, and my activator absolutely thrives inside of it. My second meeting is this. I call it the dinner meeting, and I go have dinner by myself. My favorite place places to do this is a like medium-level busy restaurant where people can eat at the bar, and there's enough space for me to not feel guilty or, or, or wrong about having my iPad Pro out in front of me or having a laptop out in front of me. Uh, I like it because, you know, the bartender can come. They can get, check on you. There's a little bit of small talk, but they're not in front of you all the time. It, for some odd reason, it lets the uh, just extrovert side of me get into a sweet spot. And I'm going to want to be there for two or three hours. That's also another place. Where can I camp out? What's, what place is going to be cool with me sitting there for two or three hours? I had one of these in my old hometown and I did a dinner meeting with myself every Wednesday night, probably for all of 2021 and a decent amount of 2022. And I'll tell you, I began to treasure that time. My wife had an appointment on Wednesday nights, and she was gone for a few hours, and I was responsible for my own dinner. And so I would go to Revival Pizza. I would have a pizza. I'd have a couple of beers. I would do the thing, and I would sit there, and I would have my dinner meeting. And this is what would happen with my dinner meeting. Uh, my dinner meeting so many times was for thinking and for dreaming. It was when I'm thinking about something, I'm thinking about an idea or a concept or an issue or a program or a ministry or something like that that has to have a lot of parts to it. And I'm thinking at the 50,000 foot view. A lot of times what I'm doing here right now is I'm also connecting dots. So if I've been collecting you know, just tons of stuff randomly uh, through Readwise or through Twitter, you know, ideas and Evernote, like that kind of stuff. Like this is where I begin to take everything that's been tagged or somewhat identified with this, and I begin connecting those dots together. If I'm thinking about a program, it, 
I've been doing the research about it, and I realize, okay, now it's time for me to coalesce these three or four larger ideas that I've discovered. Let me take the time now to work them into something cohesive as a whole. It's going to happen at this meeting. I'm also creating things at this meeting. This is the space where so many first drafts happen, and it might even be the space before a first draft. Instead, it's just when I'm going to absolutely empty out every single thing I can think about. I get into some sort of a weird flow state. Um, I've written 10 pages straight in one sitting like this at one of these dinner meetings with myself. Uh, This is going to be just the big, huge pass that I have to make over things. Occasionally, I will read during this meeting, but it is specifically for research and for taking notes. Like there is a thing that's happening very clearly inside of it, and I'm going to be going through it. I've got a purpose that's in mind there. The dinner meeting is all about big ideas. That's really what it's at. It's about big ideas, and it's about, for some odd reason, the chaos of sitting there by myself in a place that's safe for me to camp out. I Sidebar, you can't really do this kind of meeting unless you know the place really well and the people really well. But it might for you, it might not be sitting over like a long dinner like I can. Like I, I will make that pizza last an hour, hour and a half when I'm at my joint doing that. Uh, it, it's about a long time. This is really deep work. And it sounds somewhat antithetical to the idea, but this might have been when I was in grad school. I managed a coffee house and I ended up writing a master's thesis on preaching revelation while I was working and closing the night shift at this place. And my laptop was just on top of the ice machine with the books I was working on that night. And I wrote that thing in like 20 minute bursts uh, between when I had like orders come through in the kitchen. So that might be where it come from is I need to be almost in a mildly distracted state at this point in time. And I like to be a little bit social during it as well. But this might look really different for you. This is really about a meeting for you to do really, really high level, deep, big things. I will also design sermon series, especially if you've been around the way I teach about preaching series with major series and minor series, especially those major theories. When I need to coalesce a lot of ideas together to come up with some overarching ideas for, you know, four, six, eight weeks of a preaching series, that sort of piece, it's there. And my constant companion really inside of these meetings is my iPad Pro because I can access everything on there And I can use GoodNotes, my Apple Pencil. And that situation is highly more valuable than a laptop or just a paper notebook to me. Because I would just, if I'm on my phone trying to access this stuff and to work on it in a paper notebook, I'm just going to be on Twitter the whole time and I don't want to do that. So inside of this meeting, the strength that's really firing is called ideation. Ideation is a strategic thinking strength and it's inside of my top 10. It also likes to hang out with another strength called a learner, which I have. But for me, so much of this is living inside of the ideation. It's about the collecting these things together and putting them through some certain stuff. And so that's what a dinner meeting does. I also like to schedule a reading meeting. Now, this might seem kind of silly because I read a lot. I try to read about an hour a day anyway, uh, whether it's for just like personal stuff, sermon preparation, just theological vision research, that kind of stuff. I I typically read at least an hour a day, but every now and then I need to schedule a reading meeting. This is when I need to make a really big push through something. So if I'm reading something long and complicated, like I've been reading Charles Taylor's A Secular Age for two years now. I used to do that a little bit during a dinner meeting and I realized, no, Chad, reading is not for that. Uh, But if I'm reading, I've got three or four books I have right now that I know are going to be long reads and they're big reads. They're academic reads, seven, 800 pages, that sort of a stuff. Every now and then, I like to schedule reading time where I have a few hours to just be uninterrupted. I like for this to be in the right kind of setting. I can't do this in my office. I do need to be somewhere else. I've gotten a lot of really, really big reading done before uh, at a cigar lounge. Just I'll go get in the corner by myself and have my book and sit there and do my things. I can do this in my backyard. A lot of times on Sunday afternoons to relax, I will find myself in this place. So I'll read, uh, I'll say, listen, I'm going to make it through 50 or 60 pages of this really complicated book while taking notes on it. Or sometimes I'm going to read a whole smaller book. This week, I had a little bit of an opening in my schedule, and there was a book that came out from the guy that runs Text in Church about creating guest integration systems. So I was like, you know, I'm, I'm really liking what this guy's saying right now. Let me read this book. And I, I found a couple of hours to go over, and I and I went to the coffee shop. I went to the coffee shop, and I went to the one that has the comfortable chairs, not the tables. 
Uh, that might be the thing. You need a comfortable chair, not a comfortable table for this sort of a thing. And I brought the book and I sat there and it took me an hour and a half and I read and took notes throughout the whole book. It was really helpful. Um, I've gone on vacations before uh, with just my wife and I, but she has to work or she has a reason she's there. I've also a couple of times gone on a longer vacation like just by myself or for study retreats, that sort of a thing, to where I will bring you know only three or four books. And my goal is to sit there and read the entire thing. I read... A, I read Charles Marsh. I can't remember how many pages this is. It's thick. It's thick enough to like hurt if you drop it on your foot. But his entire biography on Dietrich Bonhoeffer, I read it over two days on the beach in the Bahamas a few years ago. I just, I'm going to sit down. I read, a, I was reading a book on uh, neuroscience at the beach this year on vacation. I mean, just give me a long, long uninterrupted time where my only focus is I'm going to sit here in a comfortable place and I'm going to read. I'll also take study retreats, and I feel like study retreats, I've not done one in a few years. I'm kind of itching to do one again, although I don't necessarily have the justification for it like I did when I was in the pulpit full time. But sometimes these can be uh, for extended sermon preparation. I went to the Lanier Theological Library in Houston. It's the uh, country's largest uh, private theological library, but it's open to the public. I went there one time for five days, and I literally read for five days straight and I knocked out a massive amount of sermon preparation for like six months in a row at that point in time. And so, you know, you really see this reading meeting become powerful when you need to go deep or you need to go really, really wide quickly. And this activates my learner. I talked about learner a little bit in the past one, but I just, I have this thing about knowing things through reading. And if I don't have the time to do that, I can tell there's a problem. One of the reasons I, I can tell you I read for an hour a day is in, in my own worksheet, my, my day sheet that I give away, I have reading is one of those. Like I know that if I'm not reading, I'm not going to be operating or functioning at my best. And that includes, you know, some reading during the day. That sometimes includes more extended times of reading during the day, but a, around once a month, twice a month, I need to have some solid blocks of reading to get done. And I like to say once a year, I need to have like a week. And I typically, you know, very rarely is it something that's completely unrelated to what I'm doing right now. Like the, the book on neuroscience I was reading this past summer had to do with coaching stuff. It had to do with some, uh, the ways I work with clergy who are experiencing burnout, but also uh, the ways I've been thinking about healthy ministry and what healthy ministry has to look like. And I want to understand how our brain works, especially in a spiritual dynamic. So that was the book that I brought to the beach with me. So it's, it's never like, I'm not sitting there, and, I'm going to read The Lord of the Rings this week. I, it, it's not that. I really don't read much fiction, and I'm not going to devote fiction. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going to get fiction that sort of time. But my reading time allows me to get the breadth and the depth that I feel like I need to do the ministry job I have in moments. So that's my third personal meeting I schedule. The last is this. It's the planning meeting. And I'll do these a lot at the end of the year, in the beginning of the year, and during the summer. This is like an every six month sort of thing. But I've also learned how to get myself into this mode. And so once or twice a month, for an hour or so, I can do, I'll do this. And I can do this planning meeting anywhere. Sometimes I do it in my office at the house because I've got my four by eight whiteboard I can work off of. Sometimes I'm lucky enough to where, especially if it's a church here in Louisiana that I know the pastor well and I've worked with them before. If we have like an afternoon meeting scheduled and I know they got a good whiteboard somewhere in a Sunday school classroom that's removed away from everybody, I'll just say, hey, listen, can I come in like at nine o'clock this morning and just work out of the Sunday school room until noon and just have access to the whiteboard and a desk there? Um, you know, th- that kind of stuff. I need to have things. I even, I, and I, I stash them here at the house. I've got them with the giant stickies that you can put on a wall. I can I- even improvise and do that because I am such a visual thinker. I need to have the ability to think visually in big ways sometimes. But you think about planning meetings. So this is going to be something that you do, you know, year end sermon preparation. So if you're going to try to design a 12 month preaching calendar, I think these meetings are the perfect thing for it. If you've got a larger campaign or initiative at your church, you need to think about having a planning meeting. If this is going to be any sort of a thing you do, it's going to have a multi-step process. And when I mean multi-step process, I'm meaning that there are going to be, let's say, 25 different individual tasks or, 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 or 
goalposts or that sort of a thing that's attached to this, that's going to kind of deserve planning meeting time because this is where you're going to d- begin developing the second and the third layers to what this looks like. The first layer is something I'll do at that dinner meeting and I'll hold on to it enough and I'll have enough of an idea, but the, this is not where you know, the future things are necessarily happening. This is where you're starting to work on the next present steps and that sort of piece. So anything that's going to be a multi-step process, this idea of the planning meeting matters. And you might be in a ministry situation. I've been in them before where I've had to go into this space at least twice a month, sometimes more than that. The planning meeting is also the only time I might pull somebody else in, but generally I want to have a few hours to myself first. And when I pull somebody in, I'm wanting them to be, begin looking at what I am already thinking through. Uh, but the planning meeting, there's a, a process that's unique that I've learned over the years of how I do this to where I can get super, super, super granular in that time. As far as the strengths are concerned, what that really exercises is my strategic strength, which is my number one strength. And four, uh, four or five of my top 10 strengths live in the strategic thinking domain. Uh, But strategic is my number one strength. Strategic uh, strength is about uh, seeing that there's multiple ways forward and understanding and identifying what the best way forward might be. It's also my maximizer, which is my third strength. And maximizers always want things and always believe that things can be better. It's not necessarily that something is wrong or that something is bad. It's just we can always tweak this out to be a little bit better. And what I've realized is if I don't have the planning meeting times and I don't have the iteration and follow-up conversations with people, I will start trying to maximize things that have no business being maximized. This is where I will get picky. Uh, I am, I, I was accused at one point in time a few years ago of being a control freak. And I laughed really, really hard before I realized, well, if my maximizer is too involved, I will be. I will be a perfectionist as far as that's concerned. And you know, most people look at me and they're like, Chad's not a perfectionist. What sort of, there's so many things I do not care about whatsoever at all. But if you let my maximizer get in there, I can get a little bit picky. And one of the ways I keep my maximizer in check is giving myself the ability to have this sort of a planning meeting, you know, once a month, twice a month, or as often as necessary. And I like to be able to get a handful of big, long runs out at this uh, over the course of the year. I'll go to my deer camp for this, especially when it's outside of hunting season and I have the whole place to myself. I can kind of be in this like weird 70% functioning planning mode for several days just by myself. And whenever uh, I feel like I need a break to get up for air, I can just go take a drive. Uh, I can walk around the camp. I can, you know, go see whatever's going on. And that's what happens. But this is the thing. The productive pastor, healthy ministry through strategic productivity. All of these meetings are not necessarily about the strategic productivity part. They're about the healthy ministry. And I hope you've understood how I've realized that all of these things, when they happen, they allow me to be in ministry healthier. So you might have very different meetings. You might have very different needs. You might be saying, Chad, the chaos monster is eating me alive. And now I'm realizing I might need some personal meetings. You know, whatever you might think about this, do me a favor. Let me know on the socials what you think. And you, at Rev Chad Brooks, everywhere, you can come in the Productive Pastor community, drop onto the, uh, the, the episode post. Uh, I like to have conversations with people about the episode underneath there. But think about this. What meetings do you already have going on that you've not been intentional about and you've not realized the role they play? Or perhaps what meeting or what meetings do you need to put into your schedule. These sort of personal meetings are an amazing and great defense mechanism against just simply always being reactive. Because all four of these meeting types, they tell me, they help me understand where the way forward needs to go. But they also, they allow me to come in and to take care of that middle zone and the back end zone of tasks. Like, you know, my activator loves to get things started. I get so much energy off of getting things started. I don't really like finishing things. And, and I found that all of these meetings actually allow me to help stay on the path regardless of what's going on and to see big things happen through the work that I'm doing. So another episode of Productive Pastor. Thank you so much for hanging out and being part of this. 
I'll see you back in the next episode.